Good evening, everyone. From New York, I'm Ayman Mohideen in for Chris Hayes. It has been 14 months since Donald Trump left the White House. And just when we thought we knew everything about how dangerous, how unhinged, or how downright stupid this man and his administration were, along comes another book. This time by this man, Mark Esper. Uh, he was Trump's second secretary of defense, and you probably last heard of him back in 2020 when Trump fired him on Twitter right after the election. And in the past year and a half, we have learned more about the circumstances of his ouster. Trump and Esper, you know, they were on the outs for much of 2020. And after Esper publicly at the time disagreed with the ex-president's proposal to use the military to quash protests across this country after the murder of George Floyd. But here's the thing. Esper's last straw, it may have been courtesy of this man, Johnny McEntee. Uh, he is a close Trump ally. He's a former football player uh, who actually ran the powerful White House personnel office. In fact, McEntee was sometimes called the deputy president because of the authority that he wielded within the Trump administration. And about a month before Esper was actually fired, uh, McEntee's office reportedly circulated this memo uh, about him, as first revealed by journalist Jonathan Carl in his book Betrayal. The memo outlines more than a dozen reasons Esper should be removed, and chief among them, publicly opposing the president's direction to utilize American forces to put down the riots just outside the White House. Uh, the memo also cites, among other concerns, Esper's removal of the Confederate flag from military installations and the fact that he had promoted Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, the national security official who, of course, became a star witness in Trump's first impeachment trial. Uh, and now, well over a year since he was fired, Esper is outselling a memoir on his time in the administration. And as in the case with every other tell-all book about the ex-president, it is full of some shocking, previously unreported allegations. According to a New York Times report on the book, which has not yet publicly been released, uh, quote, Trump asked Esper about the possibility of launching missiles into Mexico to destroy the drug labs and wipe out the cartels, maintaining that the United States' involvement in a strike against its southern neighbor could be kept secret. Now, when Esper raised various objections about this, uh, Trump said that we could just shoot some Patriot missiles and take out the labs quietly, adding that, no one would know it was us. Now, let me be clear here for a second. Trump wanted to bomb Mexico, our ally, our southern neighbor, in what would certainly be an act of war. And he wanted to do this clandestinely, possibly in such a way that somehow blamed another actor other than the United States. And according to Esper, one of Trump's top advisors, Stephen Miller, also proposed sending hundreds of thousands of troops to the U.S.-Mexico border. Who suggested that we send a quarter million U.S. troops to the border? Yeah, Stephen Miller. We're in a meeting waiting for the president to come out. We're standing around the Resolute desk, and uh, he's behind me, and this voice just starts talking about uh, caravans are coming, and, and we need to get troops to the border and uh, we need a quarter million troops. And I think he's joking. And then I turn around and I look at him and he's in these deadpan eyes. It's clearly he is not joking. And according to another report from The Times on the book, uh, Miller also proposed that the military secure the head of the dead ISIS leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, who had just been killed by U.S. forces. And then he went on to recommend dipping it in pig's blood and parading it around to warn other terrorists. That would be a war crime, Mr. Esper shot back. Esper is clearly eager to paint himself as a maverick in this administration. He was willing to stand up to Trump's worst impulses during the time he served. But there may be some revisionist history at play here. Yes, while Esper did publicly defy Trump on using the military to quash protests, he was actually seen as little more than a rubber stamp for Trump's schemes. As NPR uh, noted, he even earned the derisive nickname Yesper for his unwillingness to disagree with those around him in the White House. And then there's the matter of the book itself. You know, here's the thing about this for me. Esper knew before the election that Trump wanted to bomb Mexico. He knew this. 
and that his top aide, Stephen Miller, wanted troops to parade around a dead ISIS leader's head dipped in pig's blood. Didn't millions of voters have the right to know what kind of president was seeking re-election? Might that information have been relevant before now trying to sell a book? 